welcoming all of you to tonight's meeting. Um, it's gonna be a great talk. And um, before we do that, I um, wanna explain that um, when we have our meetings online, then we ask you to send in pictures of your plants. When we have meetings at Friendship Auditorium in uh, live, then you can bring your plants to the meeting, the live plants. Um, however, don't bring them in December because we don't do a plant forum uh, for our holiday meeting. Um, but I, I was looking, um, I can't, I, Laura can fill us in when she comes back in, but um, the January and February meetings, um, at least one of those will be back at the auditorium. And so you can bring live plants in with you. So at the end, um, we will show you the um, link to get to our website where you can find out more information about participating in the plant forum. And we welcome everyone. So, um, and even if you don't know the name of the plant you're taking a picture of, we can help identify it for you. And it doesn't need to be something rare and unusual. Everybody likes some of those common plants too. So we just like to get a cross section of what's growing in people's gardens um, each month. So, um, and don't be shy, um, we're here to help you. Um, so we will move forward. Alexis is going to advance the slides. We have a nice cross section of things today. Um, Alfred Hockenmeyer um, sent in some things from his garden in the San Fernando Valley, um, starting with a uh, plumeria called Kane, uh, Kaneohe Sunburst. Um, it's really interesting. When I went to Hawaii, I remember the smell of guavas and plumerias. Those were the two over amping fragrances. Um, so plumerias in time can to get to be large shrubs, small trees. Um, they will flower here all through the warm months and into early winter. Um, and then they go dormant, they drop their leaves and that's a real important time to <clears throat> make sure they don't get watered too often. So if they're in a pot, you probably wanna move it to a protected space where uh, it won't get rain if we actually get rain again this winter. Um, so Alfred has this growing in full sun, which is not, um, which is typical. Um, and it loves the valley heat, absolutely. Um, wonderful fragrance. Um, uh, he's uh, nicely fragrant, does not need some room, but oh, does need some room. Um, yeah, because it will get kind of big. They can get big um, and a very long um, bloom season. So they are widely available. The Arboretum also uh, has a wonderful collection of plumerias and they have a big plumeria festival every year and you can pick up all sorts of cuttings and growing plants of um, all kinds of different cultivars. So um, beautiful, beautiful plumeria. So that is, um, please move ahead, Alexis. And remember that this is a nicely fragrant plant. And then Alfred also has in his garden this, nasty smelling flower. Um, so this is Stapelia gigantea, um, named because uh, relative to other Stapelias, this is a big flower. And yes, it is about five inches in diameter, um, as with um, many other plants in the Apocynaceae and the Stapelias. Um, these flowers smell like rotting meat, um, which is to attract the pollinators, which are flies and also beetles and other things. Um, convinced, um, Alfred wrote, they lay their eggs on the flowers and the hapless maggots have no chance of survival given there is no food available for them. So the mother lays her eggs there, um, but uh, the babies are not going to flourish. Very easy plant to grow. Um, if you just get one little cutting, it'll root for you and uh, uh, turn into a nice container plant or you could even grow it in the ground. So from the ridiculous, the wonderful fragrance to the most foul smelling. Thank you, Alfred. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is California native um, in Alfred's garden. Um, we went on a most amazing uh, field trip, a coffee in the garden over at Alfred's um, house um, in May of this year. And we hope to return at a slightly different time of the year in 2025. Um, this garden in a very small space has the most incredibly packed selection and variety of different plants from all over the world. Um, so this is Trichostoma linatum, which is woolly blue curls. Um, it is uh, also known as Romero. 
because when the Europeans came here, they thought it was rosemary, so they, they named it that. It is indeed uh, related to rosemary, but the fragrance of the foliage and of the flowers is not at all like rosemary. It's, it's an incredibly wonderful, sweet, um, sagey kind of smell. Um, everybody, I, I've never known anyone that didn't like the fragrance of this plant. Um, it has a long bloom season, um, most, most of summer and fall. Um, grows to be a four by four foot or thereabout shrub. Um, it prefers full sun, but it can take um, partial shade. It can take um, some afternoon shade. Um, and it's very important to plant this in the fall and get it established before next summer because it wants absolutely no summer water. Um, literature will tell you that it needs good drainage, but I've seen them growing well and had long lives in gardens that had very poor drainage. So I would encourage everyone to try this plant if you have a nice sunny spot in your native plantings to put it in. Um, and um, it's pretty easy to find at all native plant nurseries. Moving ahead, Alexis. Another native, um, this one's from Laura's Garden in uh, Ventura County. This is Dendromicon or Dendromicon harfordii, which is the island bush poppy. We have a bush poppy that is native to our, our hills here, um, but this one actually um, is generally a more attractive plant um, and it hails from the Channel Islands. Um, it's a, a prettier shrub with uh, longer lasting flowers. Um, big shrub, 10 by 12, if you let it go. Flowers on and off all year long. Um, it is a true poppy. So if you get close to it, it see that it's got all the characteristics of a poppy flower. Um, dry partial shade to full sun is recommended. Um, so uh, half day is okay, full sun is better. Um, again, good drainage is a good idea. And I would plant this one in the fall or winter if you can get a hold of it. Um, it tends to sell out at nurseries very quickly. Um, it's difficult to propagate. So um, it, uh, you'll see waves of this plant come through and people just scoop them up. It does make a good cut flower as Laura note, notes, um, the foliage and um, the foliage is attractive and the buds will continue to open in a, in a vase, which is really nice. Uh, next please. All right, so this is really interesting. So Sandy um, Jepson does have it as Cleomela. Um, so I discovered today that this plant had been renamed even though um, I don't think you're gonna see it in the trade too much with this name. Um, so the name that you're probably gonna find it under is either Peridima um, or um, Isomerus, the two older names, um, all with the species epithet um, Arborea. Um, but Cleomela is the latest, the latest incarnation of this genus. Um, common name is bladder pod. You can see over on the right uh, center on this uh, photograph, you can see the pod, the seed pods, which are empty inside. They are like little bladders. The flowers are very pretty yellow and they flower almost all year. Um, I first discovered this plant when I was down in Baja, California many years ago and was fascinated by all the hummingbirds that would come to it. And that will happen in your garden as well. Um, they love it. The foliage is very pretty, but it's very stinky. It's a little bit skunky. So um, when you see the plant in the nursery, give it a, a, a light rub and decide whether you really hate it or not. And if you can't stand the smell, just make sure the plant is right, not right next to your walkway. Um, and you'll be in good shape. Um, available at native plant nurseries, really, really easy plant to grow. Um, just takes just about every condition that you could possibly throw at it. Next, please. Um, so this is a plant from Australia, um, Aramophila, and this is Nivea. Um, which um, says something about the snowy white foliage. You can see some of the pretty um, tubular uh, lavender flowers, light purple flowers on there. Um, it's in the snapdragon family. Um, this one is called, they're all collectively, the aromophilos are emu bushes. And this is silky emu bush. It's um, shrub four to five uh, feet tall by five feet wide. Flowers in spring and fall. So during our, our milder seasons. Um, good in full sun or partial shade, once established, very drought tolerant. Um, and they're some of the best plants for our alkaline clay soils and not all Australians will take that. Um, this is available at Australian native plants, whoops, 
There's no apostrophe in that. Australian Native Plants Nursery in Casita Springs, which is the road going up to Ojai. Um, and thank you, Laura, this is a pretty plant. Moving on, please. Okay, so we have a couple from um, our new board member, um, Rebecca Lotta. Um, and thank you for sending these in, Becky. Um, two really, two or three really great things. So first we have Epilobium canum, uh, synonym for Epilobium is Auchinaria, and that is still in use among many, many people in horticulture. Um, common name is California fuchsia. It's not related to fuchsias, but it has a fuchsia-like flower and it does attract hummingbirds uh, very much like uh, fuchsias. Um, California native, I saw these flowering on a hillside in Little Tahunga Canyon the other day. Big, big plants of it. Um, so late bloomer, um, these were in flower and this will flower starting in midsummer and going all the way into um, the beginning of winter or late, late fall into winter. And then the culture on this plant is you wanna cut it back to stubs every January. Um, and just have to be careful to cut back to a couple of inches and you'll see all the new growth coming up at the base. So you don't wanna cut that off. So, but uh, pretty indomitable plant in the right location and a wonderful, wonderful striking colors, mostly an orangey red. Um, there are some pink and white cultivars out there, but a great plant. Um, I would put it on a list of 10 plants if you've never grown natives that you definitely should have in your garden. So Rebecca's growing this in uh, La Cunada Flint Ridge in the uh, Presenta Valley. Um, and as I mentioned, it is a hummingbird magnet available widely at native plant nurseries. And this is the species, but there are many cultivars with different um, um, size and sizes and shapes. So moving on to the next one. Um, oh, this is really fun. Um, this is Achillean millifolium is a California native um, that is also native to Europe and many, many other places in north, the, north, um, the Northern Hemisphere. The northern, yes, what am I trying to say? In the North part of our, in part of our earth. Um, and this is one that the Germans have hybridized um, it is called Salmon Beauty, and it is remarkably, uh, this picture is so close to what we have as uh, Achillea Island Pink, which was actually found um, on the channel, uh, which channel island, I forget which, um, by Mike Evans of Tree of Life Nursery, and uh, very, very pretty. So yarrows are really valuable in gardens. Um, they are drought tolerant along the coast. They need a little bit more water inland. Um, if they get kind of uh, raggedy looking, you just mow them or cut them back and let them start over. They bloom June uh, through November in Rebecca's yard and on and off throughout the rest of the year. Um, great pollinator plant. You know, anything with these little flat topped flower clusters will attract a lot of pollinators, especially butterflies and many other things. So um, really, really pretty. Um, and uh, Rebecca got this one at San Marcos Growers. But there, if, if not this one, there are many, many other wonderful um, yarrows for you to try in your garden. And I think that may be the last plant. Um, Alexis, yeah. So um, thank you to everyone who contributed this month. And if you go to SoCalHort um, at gmail.com, that's where you can send your plant, your photographs in. But if you go to our website and just go to the information on plant forum, it'll also show you the little form that we have. And we, if possible, ask that you can fill in all of these things, which include the common name, the botanical name, um, uh, where, it, uh, where it, the plant originates, the culture, where you're growing it, all kinds of neat stuff like that. And if you don't know it all, that's okay. Send us a picture and say, contact me. I'll, and we'll ask you the questions and get as much information as we can. Um, and so that is our plant forum for the month. And we're pretty much on time, which is great. We need some more contributors. Don't be shy. Thanks.